Would you sacrifice your iron rice bowl just to pursue a dream? Well, everyone has a dream, but not many have the courage to trade it, especially in our 40s, as we have to carry the burden of caring for our aging parents and growing children. But this man, at the age of 37, was crazy enough to quit his well-paid job at Warner Music and chose to purchase an airline that was 40 million ringgit in debt. But why would he risk everything at such age? It all started with a dream to make sure everyone can fly. Welcome to New Leaf, and today we are going to talk about the man who built an airline that we, broadcast millennials, know and love. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Air Asia. Ready for takeoff. In 1964, Anthony Francis Fernandez was born in KL to an Indian father and Indian Portuguese mother. Like every typical Asian parent, his parents wanted him to become a doctor. You doctor yet? No, Dad, I'm 12. Talk to me when you doctor! So when Tony was 12, they sent him to a boarding school in England. But he knew he wasn't interested in becoming a doctor just like his father. So he chose to study accounting instead of medicine. After graduating from the London School of Economics, he went on to become an accountant but he hated every moment of his job. Which was really the worst time of my life because I really hated accountancy. But Tony failed to land a job originally. Let's rewind back to 1987. The recently graduated Tony saw in a newspaper that Virgin Communications had a vacancy for financial controller. So he went for the interview but was rejected due to the lack of related experience. Luckily, as he was leaving the interview, he saw Virgin Group founder Richard Branson walking in. Instinctively, he knew he had two options. First, be like most shy Malaysians and smile and walk off. Or second, grab that opportunity to approach him to try to get that job. He chose the latter option. Surprisingly, Branson invited him for a coffee and they started talking something about Sarawak or Orang Utan and after seeing something special in Tony, Branson gave him the job. Years later, they were inseparable, giving Tony advice and assistance when he set up AirAsia. In 2013, Branson lost a Formula 1 racing bet to Tony. The boss who once gave Tony his first job waxed his legs, put on heavy makeup, and walked down the aisle of an AirAsia flight serving beverages to passengers. If Tony did not grab the chance to approach Branson, then this bromance probably wouldn't exist today. After returning to Malaysia in 1992, the music lover soon jumped over to the music business, where he served as a Warner Music executive for 9 years. One day, he was on a business trip to London. He was sitting in a bar, trying to figure out what was missing in his life when he saw a documentary about budget airline EasyJet on the Pups TV, Tony instantly recalled his childhood love of planes. The six-year-old once told his dad that he would start an airline one day, but his father wanted him to be a doctor instead. The next day, he headed to London Luton Airport, where he realized that people can fly to France with only six US dollar, eight US dollar to Barcelona, and Asia had nothing like EasyJet. He did some research and found out that only 6% of Malaysians chose to travel by air due to the expensive airfare. Therefore, he firmly believed that there was a market for low-cost airlines in Asia. He finally found out what was missing in his life, a dream. So he left his job to pursue his childhood dream, set up Asia's first low-cost airline. Tony returned to Malaysia and gathered up some of his music industry buddies. They knew nothing about the airline business and had no clue that they had to apply for an air service license from the government. But they had the most important ingredient, passion. Tony took out his phone book and contacted everyone he knew and shared his business plan with them. But instead, he was laughed at by most of them, including his wife. They said he had no relevant experience and he will surely fail. But he didn't give a damn about it and persisted in asking every single one of them, can you please introduce anyone you knew from the aviation industry to me? This was the first step that he made towards the airline business. And when there's a will, there's a way. 
Within six months, he had a chance to meet with the Prime Minister, Dr. Mahathir, in 2001. He agreed to let Tony and his partners into the airline industry but under one condition. Purchase an existing airline rather than starting their own. AirAsia back then was a government-owned airline that was on the brink of bankruptcy. Tony had no choice but to agree to buy AirAsia from its owner, DRB Highcom, for only one ringgit and inherited not only its 265 terrified employees but also its 40 million ringgit debt. Tony tried to raise money by mortgaging his house and approaching banks for credits, but no bank gave him a cup of coffee like Branson did. Unfortunately, three days later, 9-11 happened, and the next year, SARS happened. Airlines across the world were retrenching employees and travelers feared air travel. That was like the most horrible time to be in the airline industry, and Tony honestly thought that was the end for AirAsia. He laid in bed feeling scared to death, thinking, why am I taking this risk? Is it worth it? What if I fail? He felt like giving up. But this action could lead to the loss of jobs of his 265 staff. So Tony put himself together and made an unbelievable move that even his partners thought he was crazy. He told his marketing team to triple their marketing efforts and drop the ticket fares. He joked, Because I knew Malaysians very well, if you put a fare low enough, they will risk their lives. What's more, they were willing to fly to places that most airlines didn't dare to go. For instance, after the Bali bombing in 2002, everyone was afraid to travel to Bali. But only Tony saw it as a golden opportunity and offered 5,000 free seats. And immediately, all the seats were taken up. Everyone seemed to have forgotten about the incident. His plan worked and AirAsia survived during that horrible time. It might seem like a crazy move for a music guy to presume he could run an airline. But Tony was motivated by one simple motto. YOLO I thought to myself, you only live once, so don't waste your time doing things that you don't like. I don't want to regret at 55 and say, I really wish I pursued my dream when I was young. Well, his dreams weren't in vain. In just two years, he managed to pull the company out of its 40 million ringgit debt and began ordering new aircraft and expanding. It started with just two planes, one destination, and a staff of 265 in 2001 to 255 planes flying to over 165 destinations with 20,000 staff in 2019. In 2020, Tony was listed on the Malaysia's 50 richest list with a net worth of $335 million. And the secret behind the airline's success? The people. Whenever Tony gave a speech, he would emphasize that your biggest asset is your people. What keeps AirAsia flying high is the staff. So Tony named them All Stars and treated them like a family. It is also the first airline in Malaysia and ASEAN to ever have female pilots and they are the only airline in the world to have a Miss Thailand flying for them. Unlike any big boss who always sits in the office, he would sometimes work on the ground carrying luggage with the ground crew or check in for customers. In order to understand what his staff are going through on a daily basis, he would often pat on their shoulders and tell these young fellows that any one of them might have the chance to pursue their dreams at Air Asia. The dreams of baggage carrier becomes a pilot, the accountant becomes a pilot, the pilot becomes a Miss Universe, will come true anytime. He did not care if you had money or great education, but if you had the will and passion, you could achieve anything in this airline. So you imagine you join to carry bags, seven years later, or eight years later, you're a captain in AirAsia. That's the power of AirAsia, that really we turn raw diamonds into diamonds. As a child, Tony dreamt of three things, running an airline, owning an English football club, and owning a Formula 1 racing team. Well, it would take more than 40 years, but his childhood dreams eventually did become a reality, in a way that Tony himself could not have imagined. He also expanded his ventures to hotel, telecommunication, fintech, insurance, restaurant that serves actual plain food, and the list goes on. 
In 2017, Tony married a South Korean actress after divorcing his ex-wife who once left and told Tony better go to flip Roti Chanai instead of him studying an airline. After 20 years with Tony Fernandez at the helm, the 57-year-old billionaire transformed the once-money-losing AirAsia into now one of the six largest airlines in Asia. If he had followed the path chosen by his parents and did not pursue his dreams, he could have ended up as a doctor or an accountant, a job that he would be unhappy for the rest of his life. A life without a dream is like a human without a soul, so dare to dream and dream big. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. When he founded AirAsia, people made fun of his dreams and said he was destined to fail. Had Tony listened to their opinions and gave up before he even started, then today, AirAsia would still be the bluebird on the ground. And everyone can fly. I started from zero. I had zero money, I had zero knowledge, I had zero connections, but I have one dream. And that dream has made me who I am today. AirAsia had been through a lot of unfortunate times, like terrorism, H1N1, SARS, COVID-19, and so on. But in the end, Tony kept his company alive. And most importantly, he kept his dream alive. So when you're having a tough time, it's good to remember that one of the most successful airlines in the world began with a dream. Do you have a dream? Hey everybody, thanks for watching and tell us your dreams in the comment section below. So please subscribe and give us a like as this will be our motivation to create more videos to inspire you guys. As usual, stay bright.